the first half here at Iowa State and Kansas leading the Cyclones 10 to 6 and thus far this may be the story of the ball game the rebounding right now the Cyclones have no rebounds and if they're going to play against Kansas tonight they're going to have to get some offensive rebounds it is going to be a chore you have to look when you go inside against Kansas it's seven foot one six foot eleven bingo and then the others are all good leapers around six 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 five there's Larry Brown the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks he's in his fifth year of college coaching and his record of course 108 wins and only 37 losses the inbounds play Kellogg launches and Hornacek there with a the far side rebound first rebound of the ball game for Iowa State Hornacek wants to push it up court but the Jayhawks back quickly and it appears right now that Kansas might be well no still chasing Hornacek anyway matchup zone very loose man to man. They're clogging up the middle. Horlicek brings it back out for Iowa State. 10 6, Kansas. Danny Manning getting Greer tonight. Here's Horlicek from long range in and out, riling there with a rebound. And nobody there for Iowa State. There are a couple of them there, but they don't have a chance with Grayling in there. And Grayling's one of the most improved players in the Big Eight Conference. Sam Hill now hounding Grayling. He tries to drive the lane and does so, and it's a foul on Hill. Third team foul on Iowa State. The first foul on Sam Hill. Sam trying to work against Dryling, who's driving. There looks like that looks like an awfully good block right there. Watch it once again. Virgil reached in and Sam went up. I don't think he caught hand at all or arm. If he catches hand, that's part of the ball. But uh, looked to me like it was a good clean block. Kansas should have it out of bounds. Well, instead, it's going to be Dryling at the line. Now, he's a 63.8% free throw shooter. And he hits this one. 66% from the field. Five points in the ballgame for Dryling. He's the leading rebounder this season for Kansas. And he has, well, one of two. Iowa State rushing up court. Virgil in the lane, shovels into Tompkins, and he hurried the shot. Tompkins rushed it. Kansas down on a three-on-two. Cedric Hunter stripped away by Hornacek. And Hornacek with a three-on-three -three to Hill. Stops, fires, bingo! Oh. Great play by Hornacek. Great play by the Cyclones. Watch Hornacek right here. Up from the back. Peeled it off the hands of Hunter and led the break down court. Sam hit the 15-footer. And Kansas has to slow it up. Iowa State trailing now by three, 11 to eight. And the crowd is now into it. 14 minutes. Virgil knocks it to the floor. Kellogg dives for it and is tied up. And it will be Iowa State basketball on the alternate possession rule. Excellent play by Ronnie Virgil. Popped the ball loose and made the scramble for it. Tompkins and Hornacek arrived, but the ball was picked up on the floor. Cyclones have it in the alternate possession. Hornacek wanting to push it up court. Greer. A lot of times Iowa State will clear out one side and let Greer go one and one, but I don't know how many times they'll do that tonight against Danny Manning as Sam Hill launches and connects with his fourth point of the ball game, and Iowa State back in it within one. I'll tell you, they're going to need a little of that, too, to keep Dryling away from the boards, and if Sam can hit out from that shot about the free throw line, that'll keep Dryling away from the boards. Here's the give and go. Dryling to Kellogg, lays it over his head, and an offensive foul on Ron Kellogg. Watch this. Grayer gets planted right there. Shot is up. Second foul against Kansas. Another look at it. And Grayer just planted himself in the lane. No opportunity to go either way. You hear a lot of talk when you hear about Kansas, about Danny Manning and Greg Dryling. But the man that makes the team go is Ron Kellogg as Hornacek bounces it out of bounds. And in the previous two wins, Iowa State stopped Ron Kellogg. State leading in the foul department. They have three, and Kansas only has two. And knocked out of bounds by Ryan Virgil. Kansas now trying to pick up the tempo somewhat offensively as they move that ball around the horn quickly. Kansas can move the ball, but I don't think they can run with the Cyclones. Thompson just cruised around Hornacek for his first two of the ball game. 
And he slammed it home. 13-10, Jayhawks. That's a good-sized guard at 6-6. Greer in heavy traffic during double team finds Hornacek open to Hill over Dryling. And Hill is hot. Six for Hill. Seems like the big game, Sam Hill plays well. He really does. Sam, Sam loves to play against guys that are bigger than he is. Sometimes gets in a little bit of foul trouble, but really plays well. Alley-oop to Dryling, not there. Comes down into the hands of Virgil. Hornacek pulls it up. And there's four in the ballgame for Hornacek. And for the first time tonight, Iowa State has claimed the lead by one. 12 minutes, four seconds left to play in the first half. Manning in the lane. Easy two. And Manning has yet to miss. That's eight points for Manning. And here we go the other way. The track meet is on as Greer hits it. Boy, don't look down to write down the score. You're going to miss some. Greer has four. And Iowa State back in front by one. Danny Manning, four baskets in a row. He's four for four from the field, leading Kansas with eight points. Hunter has yet to score. Here's Manning. Five out of five. Wonder if Johnny Orr is going to make a switch in that department. I don't know. Uh, last year, Grayer down at Kansas uh, held Manning to nine points, and then when Grayer fouled out, Manning picked up and ended up with 22. Grayer gets stuck and has to pump it up, and Tompkins on the rebound foul. Tompkins with his first foul in the ball game. That will be the fourth team foul now against Iowa State. One of those fouls that you don't completely understand that uh, with all the pushing and shoving that goes on under the board and a little flip on the wrist as the ball is coming out on a break and it's it's called a foul. Time out on the court. 11 minutes, 7 seconds remaining to play in the first half. And right now it's Kansas 17. The Iowa State Cyclones 16. Up to play in the first half here at Hilton Coliseum, and it's a one-point ball game. Both teams, well, there's the turnovers. Kansas turning it over five times, Iowa State two. But look at this, both teams shooting lights out. Kansas 67%, Iowa State 62%. 8 of 13 for the Cyclones, 8 of 12 for the Kansans. And in the rebounding department, Kansas with a distinct advantage, 7 to 3. Kansas with that size inside. The Cyclones have neutralized it a little bit by Sam Hill hitting outside. There's another score in the Big 8. Missouri leading Colorado 38 to 27. Missouri's going to be a contender. I'll tell you, they're good first five. They're a little bit shallow on the bench, but a good ball club. Iowa State with token pressure in the backcourt on Hunter. Archie Marshall comes into the lineup during the timeout for Kansas, replacing Ron Kellogg. Marshall, a junior from Tulsa, Averaging 7.5 points of all game. He's got the ball in his possession there. Number 23. Inside Manning baseline. Six out of six for Dan Manning. 12 points to lead all scores in the ball game. And Kansas climbs on top by three. I don't know what you can do with it defensively against Manning. There's just not much you can much you can do for the guy. And he's only a sophomore. Virgil. From the baseline, connects with his fourth point. Virgil trying to slow up Cedric Hunter. 19-18 Kansas. 10-16 left to go in the first half. Mark Matthew and George Turner on the Cyclone Television Network. Well, you look at the size of this Thompson. He looks more like tight end than anything. Big fella, 6'6". Six, six. Looks to be about 225, 230. Hill really battling Dryling inside. As outside Calvin Thompson fires from 18 and hits. Four in the ball game for Thompson. 21-18, Kansas by three. Iowa State has led twice by one point, and both leads were short line. Cutter is Hornacek. Too far under when he got the ball, but still finds room to fire, and it's not there. Thompson down with the rebound for the Jayhawks. Fast break, and traveling is going to be called against Archie Marshall. It's either traveling or a charge. Virgil was there. See Ronnie right there. All set in position. Johnny Orr asking for a foul from the official, but not vehemently. Now Mark Turgeon comes into the lineup for Kansas. Going out is going to be Cedric Cutter. Turgeon, only a junior, but a short one. 5'10 from Topeka, Kansas. Only weighs 150 pounds. Averages three points 
a ball game on the season. Greer looking for help inside and no one there. Hill's out at the high post. Now Greer looking into Hill. And Iowa State will try the other side. Kansas really sagging in the paint. Making Iowa State take those shots from a long, long way away. Intended for Hill, stripped away. Hornacek comes up with it. Doesn't get it, but Greer is there with a the tip in. Great play by Hornacek to strip the ball loose. Got it up in the air, and Greer's right there to follow it up. Six points in the ball game for Greer. And it's back to a three-point lead. Manning with his first miss in the ball game, and Hill clears the glass. Down comes Greer, two on two in the lane. Lays it up and in, and a foul call. And it's going to be on Greer. Good the play by Greer. Eight points. Yeah, could go either way. Kind of slid in under him a little bit. Well, the basket counts, and Iowa State has forged back into the lead, 22-21, as Turgeon now works against Tompkins. Turgeon's going to be the Cyclone fans' favorite tonight. They'll give him a little rousing as he plays. And Tom Schaefer will be checking in now during the dead ball. Schaefer, a transfer from Illinois, 6'7", 210-pound junior, and he'll spare Jeff Greer. Greer has two fouls in the ball game, and Johnny Orr doesn't want him picking up number three, least of all in the first half, let alone this early in the half. Eight and a half left to go in the first. Manning being double teamed on the baseline. Fires that one wide, an air ball, and it gets away and out of bounds. Marshall went after it, couldn't find the handle. And now Ron Kellogg comes back into the Jayhawks. And Calvin Thompson will go out for a rest as we look at Johnny Orr shouting instructions to his Cyclones. Manning working against a different defensive player and a little bit, a little bit shaken on that play. I think he tried to rush it. Eight minutes left to go in the first half. Iowa State by one as Hill fires from 15. And Manning there to sky for the rebound. Turgeon looking for the alley-oop. Let Kellogg go. Now he's open from 18. And Kellogg not on tonight. Dryling stripped from behind. Picked up and in by Archie Marshall. First two points of the ball game by Marshall. And Kansas regains the lead. Iowa State with a great deal of their firepower now on the bench as Jeff Greer, who's the leading scorer, is down for a breather with two fouls. Both fouls were offensive fouls. Shotguns are going to have to watch this because Greer, they're going to work on him, get some fouls. Here's Hill from 15. Out there, Hill rebounds his own miss. Tries to go back up and in and does, and it's fouled. Boy, oh, Sam's really working hard. He missed the shot, scratched right after it, took a little dribble. Came right in, went up over the top, and is fouled from behind. Good look at it. You see Sam, nice inside move, up over the top. Grayling's there, but the foul charge will leave to, who was it, Marshall? I believe it was on Danny Manning. They're flashing Manning. his number. Right. Can't get used to this new scoreboard, Mark. It's a little confusing when you look up at it from here. Hill gets Iowa State their biggest lead of the ball game. Two points. And Hill now has time to lead the Cyclones. And there's time out on the court. With seven minutes, two seconds left to play in the first half. It's Iowa State 25, Kansas 23. The campus of Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. And Iowa State leading the fourth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks 25-23. And Jeff Greer checks back in for Iowa State. He'll be replacing Gary Tompkins. So Iowa State with his taller lineup now. And for Kansas, we also have a substitution. Chris Piper, a 6'8 sophomore forward from Lawrence, Kansas, is in the lineup. And he'll be sparing Greg Greiling for a few moments rest. And Cyclones going with a full court pressure. There's another score. Missouri 48, Colorado 33 at halftime. A 15 point halftime leads in the Big Eight. Don't last very long, usually in the second. Turgeon working against Hornacek now. Kellogg, the Big Eight player of the week, has yet to score a point in this one. Kellogg finally 
certificates in the book. Maybe we shouldn't say any more about Kellogg. Huh? I wish he hadn't brought that up. First two of the ball game for Kellogg. And he knocks it all at 25. Kansas shooting 58% from outside. Iowa State 57. Hornacek just off the heel of the iron. The far rebound detergent. From 15, he'll find Manning, and it's up, not there. And the rebound, fought for and saved by Danny Manning. Manning now being guarded by Tom Schaefer. But obviously with a three-inch height advantage. Manning at 6'10", Schaefer at 6'7". Here's the alley-oop to Manning. And it's up and in. And Manning now with 14 points all in the first half. And Kansas back on top by two. The pass to Manning is anything but perfect. It's not a basket, but uh, great body control. Rare left open for a moment. Decides against the shot. Kansas playing a sagging man-to-man, -man, trying to clog up the middle, and Greer goes right over top of Piper. And Greer in the ballgame now with 10. Greer working inside. That's his strong point. Calvin Thompson checks in at the scorer's table along with Greg Dryling. They'll both come back in for Kansas during the next dead ball. Hornacek knocks it away from Kansas. Tom Schaefer, Hornacek to Greer. Kansas back quickly, though. And Iowa State will have to be patient. Boy, Hornacek goes down the middle and just gets hammered every play. Turgeon's working him over pretty good, and whoever happens to be in the center just pops him good. Three starters coming back in now for Kansas, and Larry Brown wisely giving some needed rest to some of the big guns. Manning on the bench. Greer misfires on that one. It rolls into the hands of Dryling. And Cedric Hunter wastes no time in bringing it up court. Kansas, an excellent basketball team. And Johnny Orr, the coach of Iowa State, says they should well be a Final Four team in the NCAA tournament. Thompson all alone from outside. Doesn't hit it. Rebound deflected into the hands of Greer. Virgil wanting to run, but no one down court to assist him. Schaefer on the move. Off the glass. And Sam Hill gets a foul. A ticky-tacky foul, and Sam knew he shouldn't have made the reach. Should, should have reached over the top. Watch this. Sam up over the top. Maybe a little back and in, but nevertheless, the foul goes against Sam. Tell you, Schaefer would like to have that one back. He almost cracked the West backboard with that one. Second foul on Hill, and Hill would like to have that one back. That's a freshman foul. Kansas, Iowa State nodded at 27. Four minutes, 10 seconds left to play first half. Riley in the paint. Stripped away by Sam Hill. Down to Greer, and here's a two on one. And Virgil stopped short. Hornacek from the free throw line. That was one of the smartest plays I've seen all year. You bet. Greer made the interception, started the break, put a nice pass to Virgil. He was covered, went right back outside. They had a three on two advantage, rebounding if Hornacek misses. Elmer Robinson getting ready to check in for Iowa State. Kellogg from 15, swish. And I think that one was partially deflected. I'll tell you, Kansas last year did not have the outside shooting they have this year. They have really improved in that category. This game is everything everybody had said it would be. And here's Schaefer launching. Sam Hill tries to stop it home. Doesn't get it. But they do have the ball. And Virgil makes the most of it. Well, this is great play. I'll tell you, Cyclones have really worked hard. And they're fighting that height disadvantage. Covering it well. Sam really hustled to get that rebound. Made a good pass. Virgil was open. Took the shot. Riley wanting to go on a hill with a sky hook. It won't fall. And Greer finally gets the rebound, and he's fouled by Piper. Boy, Greer working hard. Watch up for the rebound. Look at the height he gets. Piper's clear over the back. It's only the fourth team foul against Kansas. First foul on Piper. He'll go to the bench, and Manning will come back in. But there's time out on the court. And we have 2.51 to play in the first half, and Iowa State still leads the fourth-ranked Jayhawks.
Keith Brown, one of the finest coaches in America. At Kansas, 66 and 20. And he has really built a great team this year. Grayer back out for a little rest. David Moss in the lineup, as is Elmer Robinson. Robinson will fire. Virgil has it slapped away, and it's deflected into the hands of Hornacek. And he almost has it taken away, and now a foul called. And it's going to be on Calvin Thompson of Kansas. Seems like that took an awful long time to get it called. He was hammered there, hammered there, and finally they came up and blew the whistle. Looked like Kansas was going for a breakaway, but uh, foul made on Calvin Thompson, his second. The fifth team foul against the Jayhawks. Iowa State has committed 16 fouls. Archie Marshall getting ready to check into the Kansas lineup. Here's Schaefer. Sam Hill getting a much needed rest. Hill in the ball game with nine points and two fouls. Greer with ten points and two fouls. But Johnny Orr doesn't want that third foul prior to halftime if he doesn't need to. And David Moss comes up with a big basket on Dreiling. Oh, this is one of the better moves by Moss. Watch this. He snakes by Dreiling, shields him with his hip, puts it up off the glass. Another look at it. One step. Nice move by Moss. Senior has played well in spots this year. Fine effort by David Moss. Gives the Cyclones a four-point lead, and he'll have a shot at a free throw. Biggest lead of the ball game for Iowa State. Dave Moss at the line, a 59% free throw shooter on the season. And he connects when they need it most. And Iowa State leads by five. Hey, Moss is another one that has played extremely well this year against good players. Bench scoring. 3-2 Iowa State, and if you have to give an advantage to the Cyclones corner, it is the bench. They certainly have a lot of good players on the bench. Kellogg, baseline, grills it for his sixth point of the ball game and cuts the margin to three. Kellogg with six, averaging nearly 17 points a game. He's a good player. Cutter, Hornacek, feeds cross-court to Schaefer, can't find it, too far under, Dryling. Cedric Hunter, Kellogg on the move, and the rebound, Tom Schaefer, down to Virgil, two on one, to Robinson, reverse layup on fall, Virgil can't find it, Moss has it, and he'll bring it back outside, and then Hornacek. Oh, this is great play, great play by two teams, but I'll tell you, the Cyclones, they've forgotten that Nebraska game. That's out of their mind. This is a super effort. Hunter working one-on-one. -on -one, stripped of the ball from behind, but a foul's going to be called on Elmer Robinson. And Hunter will have a pair coming in the line. They let that go. We might see a Hornacek stuff. This was, I thought, an excellent play by Elmer Robinson. Popped the ball, maybe got a little bit of hand, but the hand's part of the ball. Chris Piper comes back in for Kansas now. And going out is going to be Greg Dryling. Hunter goes to the line. If you're going to foul someone on Kansas, Hunter is the man to foul. He's only a 52% free throw shooter. Hunter with a pair. He plays with lively legs. He shoots with dead legs. This is perhaps the Achilles heel of Kansas. He usually has the ball in his hands down the stretch. Well, it doesn't touch the rim. It's out of bounds. It didn't hit the rim. The referee oh, underneath it. wanted to know if it hit the rim, and the outer referee said it did. Johnny Orr asking for the explanation. Oh, that didn't touch anything. That didn't touch anything. Now Mark Turgeon comes into the ball game. Now, let's take another look at it. The ball doesn't even get to the rim. No. Nope. Grazed the net slightly. Grazed the net slightly, and that's all. But it didn't hit a ring. Kansas gets the ball out. Big, big call. And less than a minute to play now. The shot clock down to 40. Well, the shot clock and game clock are both down to about 35, 34. And Kansas now will save for one. 
They would like very much to go in the locker room, trailing only by three. They trail now by five, 36-31. And there you see that new clock here at Iowa State, measuring tenths of a second. Kansas getting possession by means of a rebound from a missed free throw that didn't even hit the rim. Kansas going for the shot now. Kellogg at the buzzer doesn't hit it. And it's halftime, and Iowa State lost at Memphis State 83-80. It will be Kansas basketball, and they'll start out with original five. Manning, Kellogg, Thompson, Dryling, and Cedric Hunter. And Iowa State also starting out with their starting five. And we'd like to say hello to the Siouxland ISU Club watching at Theo's Steakhouse via satellite. <laughs> hello. And hello down in Dallas, Texas also. We know you're watching. Kansas trying to close a five-point deficit. They go right to work with Manning, and he wastes little time in chipping away at the lead. Manning now with 16 points in the ball game. Manning scoring 14 in the first half. A lot of pushing and shoving inside the paint. And Iowa State throws it away. Virgil wanting Sam Hill to go out on the wing and another turnover for Iowa State, but only their third of the ball game. Sam Hill right at the top of the circle was open and then uh, he started to go down to set a set a screen to allow another player to come back out front with maybe the jump shot in the lane. And Virgil thought Sam was the guy. Iowa State has traditionally been a slow starting ball team. Kellogg misfires and Virgil only 6-4 and about 160 finds the rebound and almost throws it away again, saved by Greer. As you'll recall, it was Kansas that ran out to an early lead in the ball game. Iowa State played catch up, and Greer keeping the Cyclones on pace. Greer with a dozen in the ball game. Boy, you can watch that play set up. They set the screen. Greer across the middle has the open jumper at the free throw line. The guy ought to be able to handle that. Iowa State trying to front big Greg Dryling. Sam Hill with two fouls has to be careful. It's Hill at 6'9, Dryling at 7'1. One-on-one, -on -one, Manning does not decide to go against Jeff Greer. They'll try to isolate Manning if they can. Keep in mind that Greer and Manning were teammates at the World University Games down in New Orleans. Hornacek stripped Thompson of the ball but couldn't control it. Goes out of bounds. Kansas will play it under their own bucket. Just only, to the right. Only 16 seconds remain on the shot clock. Kansas will have to hurry. Inside to Dryling against Sam Hill. Doesn't get it. Rebound tipped down to Dryling and a foul called on Tompkins from behind. And Tompkins doesn't believe it, and I didn't see it. But we'll look at it again. His second of the ball game. We'll take a look, we hope, here and see what happened. Shot is up by Dryling, rolls off. Virgil tipped it across the top. Oh, yeah. See right Yeah, I caught him a little, maybe proper. Proper call. First team foul of the half. Resets the 45-second shot clock, but Manning won't use all of it. He fires quickly. Tompkins there with the rebound. Out to Hornacek, and Iowa State turning on the speed. But Kansas back to stymie that fast break. A great basketball game, as it always is. Keep in mind that Iowa State has won the last two meetings, and they continue to fire away at Kansas. And it's the biggest lead of the ball game now. Seven-point advantage for Iowa State. They have to hit the shots outside, and the Cyclones have done it well, getting good shooting. Iowa State is also not the kind of team that puts the ball away. When they slow up, they go to sleep. Dryling cuts it back down to five. Dryling was seven. Iowa State had big leads against Missouri. Other teams, and it seems like in the second half, when they try to protect that lead and waste some of the time on the clock, the opponent catches up. Hill is caught on the arm by Kellogg. Sam starts to move, had the shot off the glass, but uh, Kellogg far forced him to hurry it a little bit, hammered it off the glass, but he'll shoot two. Sam Hill, an 80% free throw shooter, is one for one from the line tonight. Had one of his better halves, nine points in the first half, an outstanding half.
Picked up four rebounds. Well, Hill is ahead of his average. Into double figures. Averaging only 8.7 points of all game. Two for two from the line tonight. And Iowa State back on top by seven. 17-16 left to play in the ball game. Hunter down quickly for Kansas. Oh, they want to go inside. Ryland too far under, and the rebound goes across the rim. A foul on Tompkins from behind. That's number three on Gary Tompkins. Johnny Orr checking with the scores table now to find out where Tompkins sits. It'll be the second team foul on Iowa State of the half. Good defensive play by Sam Hill in that last play. Drayling, Drayling got the ball inside, and all of a sudden he was behind the board. He didn't really have a shot. And here's another foul. This time it's on Hill, and that's a costly number three. Well, if Iowa State keeps going here, they're going to put Kansas at the line in no time flat. Third foul on Hill. Third team foul against Iowa State. Schaefer taking off his warm-up will be coming in momentarily. Kellogg misses it, and Calvin Thompson fouls Iowa State. Sam with great inside position, got the rebound. Well, Archie Marshall will come back into the ballgame for Kansas as Thompson takes a seat with three. And coming in for Iowa State now, Tom Schaefer. Big 6-7 forward, replacing Gary Tompkins. So Virgil then moves out as a guard. Virgil and Hornacek outside. Hornacek from 16. And Iowa State with the biggest lead of the night. Nine-point advantage, 44-35. And Hornacek with 10. Hornacek into double figures also. Cyclones taking advantage of every little mistake by Kansas. Marshall doesn't hit it. Dryling doesn't hit it. And a foul on Virgil. That'll be number two on Virgil. Team foul number five against Iowa State. Let's see if we can take a look. Burge is in there on right. someplace. He got it. on the arm. And Dryling will go to the line shooting a pair. He's one for two tonight. On the season, Dryling is an excellent free throw shooter. The guy's playing a 6 4 guy's playing a guy 7 1. He ought to get a free swing at him once in a while. That's that's a big advantage for a guy. Seven feet one. Eight points in the ball game for Dryling as we look at Ron Virgil. Make it nine for Dryling. And Kansas cuts it back to a seven-point advantage for Iowa State, 44-37. Kansas trying to put a little more pressure on the guards of Iowa State now, picking them up at half court, pressuring the basketball a little farther away from the basket, making it more difficult to go inside. Schaefer on the wing, wanted to go one-on-one -on, -one on Manning. Iowa State having to travel on the road to Stillwater, Oklahoma to take on Oklahoma State this coming Saturday. Virgil, left alone, decides to launch, partially blocked, Manning with a rebound. Kansas down quickly. Not a good shot by Virgil. Manning inside a Dryling, easy two. Dryling now with 11 in the ball game, and it's back to a five-point gap. And a foul is called on Jeff Greer. As he hustled for a loose ball, Jeff Greer has registered foul number three. Reached in. He caught basketball, went in and picked it up off the floor. That's one of those situations where the hand is part of the ball, but sometimes it didn't call that way. And Greer will maybe sit down with three fouls. Well, there's time out of the court. 15 minutes, 28 seconds left to play in this one. And Iowa State holding on to a five-point advantage. Left to play as the Cyclone jury squad says, Hello, Mid-America. 44-39. State on top. Colorado trailing Missouri tonight, 70-50, 70-57 in the second, and there are the big eight standings. Kansas undefeated. Iowa State currently tied with Missouri in third place behind Oklahoma. Johnny Orr looking on. Didn't like the last call on Greer. 
three Iowa State players now with three personal fouls. Greer will stay in there. Iowa State coming out with full court pressure now. A 2-3 zone. And now dropping back. 7-4 in the turnover department. And here's a foul on Hornacek. And Kansas now is one foul away from being at the bonus line. Hornacek's first foul of the game. Trying to put a little token pressure right there. And Cedric Hunter made a good move. Hornacek got a little bit tangled up. Rebounds Kansas with a leading by six. 23 rebounds to the Cyclones, 17. I don't think Iowa State can afford to put Kansas at the free throw line with this much time left to go. Archie Marshall bangs it in off the glass. His fourth quarter of the game, and it's back to a three-point contest. Iowa State with the widest lead of nine points just moments ago. Kansas coming out, applying more pressure to the guards. Keep in mind that starting guard Gary Tompkins is on the bench now. Johnny Orr electing to go with a little more size. In Tom Shaver, here's Hill, and a size slam a -jamma. Nice play set up beautifully by Hornacek. Drove into the middle, made the little fake, got Riley to come over on him, and uh, fed the ball. 41-46. I'll tell you what, here's another important statistic. As we mentioned, Iowa State with 16 fouls. Dryling gets the basket and the foul and has an opportunity for a three-point play. Now Sam Hill with his fourth foul of the ball game right here. Sam had just said he's feet. He might have gotten the charging call, but uh, Sam will take foul number four and sit down. David Moss, who played extremely well in the first half, Comes on to relieving. But keep in mind that Hill was having a banner night. 13 points in the ball game for Hill. Iowa State certainly losing some scoring punch as Dryling makes it a three-pointer. He is four for five from the line now. And substitutions. Tompkins coming back in for Iowa State to replace Ron Virgil. Dryling sits down for a little bit. They'll come in with Chris Piper, and uh, this might be an opportunity for the Cyclones to run a bit with it. A nine-point lead has been cut to just three, 46-43. Greer going one-on-one -on, -one on Marshall, and that's it. Marshall can't handle Greer. They're going to have to put Dryling back on Greer. 12 points in the ball game. Correction, 14 for Greer. 48-44, Iowa State by four. Inside, Piper back to Kellogg, wanting to go on the baseline, charging, no, it's on Hornacek. Second foul on Hornacek, and now Kansas will go to the line. Hornacek, Hornacek still moving. The seventh team foul, and at the line is going to be Ron Kellogg, who is the second leading free throw shooter in the Big Eight Conference, hitting 83% of his shots, second only to Jeff Hornacek, who fouled him. But he misses it, and Schaefer is fouled by Piper. But it will not be a shooting foul, only the second personal foul on Piper, the third team foul of the half on Kansas. But oh, what a miss by Ron Kellogg. Inside, Greer goes for the jam, and he's fouled. Fouled by Kellogg, and that'll be three on Ron Kellogg. Well, watch this power move. Watch the step and the leap by Jeff Greer, and he's all tangled up. You see Kellogg right there just bounced off of him. Greer grabbed a hold of the rim to save his own back from falling. Greer goes to the line as we look at Ron Kellogg picking up foul number three. Greer, a 65% free throw shooter, and there's a discussion now. Both coaches being summoned over to the scorer's table. There's Larry Brown. And Johnny Orr saying perhaps maybe the wrong score is up. Yeah, 48th, what it ought to be. Is it 48? 48. 48-44 is the score. Rare will be at the line with two. 
He has not fired from the free throw line tonight. And there's that beautiful new three quarter of a million dollar scoreboard. Of course, part of it's out in the concourses. They have message centers at each corner of the arena now. And Greer, a 65% free throw shooter, misses a big one. Greer, a 65% free throw shooter. Missed a pair. Manning down with a rebound, and Kansas can cut it back to just a basket. Iowa State with an early nine-point lead in the second half. Piper traveled with the ball. Good defensive play inside by the Cyclones. Excellent play by Moss and by Schaefer. He's kind of jumping around with it. Good play by Moss. Kansas supplying some pressure now, so Iowa State getting some help. Calvin Thompson checked back in during that dead ball and that replay. And going out is Ron Kellogg for a rest. Now Manning is back on Greer. They'll shut him down a little bit. Tompkins finds room to drive and hits it. Now that's the first point of the basketball game for Gary Tompkins. And what an unusual statistic that is, because Thompson averages in double figures. Cedric Hunter, give and go. Dryling, or rather Danny Manning, popping in. Well, Manning has a great touch. Just a great touch. Soft shooter. 18 points in the ball game for Danny Manning. Back to a four-point advantage for Iowa State. Now Iowa State wanting to spread it out. That'll help on the offensive boards against Kansas' size. It'll also spread out the defense. And Tom Schaefer gets his first two. Cyclones by six once again. Free throw line jumper and bangs it home. Thompson with six points in the ball game. Played good defense on that. He got the shot up, kind of a kind of a hope shot, but uh, it went in. And the good players will do that. Danny Manning is intimidating Jeff Greer, trying to work some cuts to free up Greer. Here's Moss from 15, isn't there? Far side rebound rifled out. Here's Kansas with a three on two. Cedric Hunter. Oh, what a basket. Off balance and still nets it. First two points of the ball game for Hunter, and he closes it to a two-point margin. Iowa State may be getting a little flat on their feet. Hornacek in the lane. Schaefer from 18. Wow. Boy, do they need him to connect. Schaefer's biggest ball game was 10 points against Detroit, and that was in a losing effort. Doing a good job on Greer. Schaefer's going to have to do that for the Cyclones. Iowa State burning the nets. Wait till we have time out and check the shooting percentages. Bench scoring 7 to 4. Kansas with two attempts. Hunter lays it up and in. And Hunter now with four quick points to put Kansas back to within two. A seat available at Hilton Coliseum. Over 14,000 on hand as the third place Cyclones try to upset the first place Jayhawks. And Dave Moss with a big basket inside. Great move inside by Moss. Great pass by Hornacek. They set the play up a screen and roll. Very simple basketball play. Properly executed, it'll work. Both teams with substitutes at the scorer's table ready to come back. Kellogg and Dryling ready to enter the game for Kansas. Virgil will check in for Iowa State. And there's a turnover. And now the substitutions will be made as Larry Brown doesn't like it a bit. Archie Marshall coming out of the ball game. Timeout called, and Larry Brown is hot. 10-17 to play, and it's a four-point lead for Iowa State. Pointer. There's the scoring. Iowa State with a five-point advantage in the first half. Kansas with a one-point advantage here in the second. And it's a four-point ball game. 56-52. Johnny Orr with possession now. Iowa State hitting 58% of their shots from the game. But here may be an interesting story. Iowa State getting nine points off the bench. Turnovers even in the second. 
This game make him come down to free throws and keep in mind that Kansas is already in the bonus. Iowa State three fouls away from the charity line. Seven to four team fouls. If anybody understands that with a couple of fouls to give it would be Larry Brown who coached in the pros for quite a while. Bonusek finds Moss open underneath goes up and gets it over Manning and what a game for Moss. He didn't need to hesitate but he still got the hoop. Sure did. David's played well. Working against Riley. Riley on the baseline. Almost threw it away. Seven points in the ball game for Dave Moss. Iowa State leads by a half dozen as Tompkins or Thompson ripples the nets from the top. And there's the outside artillery. Eight points in the ball game for Calvin Thompson and Jeff Dreyer lays it up and in. There's vintage Dreyer right there. That's that's as strong a move as Jeff Dreyer can make. Larry Super Brown quick. Wants timeout. He doesn't like it. He wanted to close the gap, and in one minute of play, the gap remains the same. Well, it's increased. It's now a six-point lead. 60-54, the Cyclones with an upset in the making. Seconds left to play in the ball game. Iowa State, with an upset in mind, leads the fourth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks by a half dozen. They led by as many as nine early in the second half. Good shot as part of the Cyclone fans here. This is one of the best crowds in the country, I'll tell you. Over 14,000 here, and that may well be the sixth man for Iowa State. Dryling on Moss. Partially blocked. Moss comes out of there with it and then throws it away. Kansas with another chance. Manning in the lane to Hunter. Stripped by Horn a second. He's fouled. Oh, great play. And the foul is going to be on Calvin Thompson, and that's number four. Outstanding defensive play by Hornacek. Watch the strip, and you see right there, Cal Thompson tried to take the ball away from Hornacek, prevent him from shooting the layup, committed the foul. They still have two to give. Here's the back door to Greer, and a size slam a jam -a. 18 for Greer, and Iowa State has roared out to an even bigger margin, 62-54. One of those out-of-bounds plays I watched them work on. It's amazing. Thompson over Greer, doesn't hit it. Rebound, fought for, still loose on the court. Greer, lead pass to Hornacek. Oh, what a pass to Virgil. Not there. Schaefer, back up, no good. Moss, still trying, he's fouled. And watch out. And Johnny Orr came out on the court to stop Dave Moss from taking a swing. And now one of the referees saying, you get back on the court in the coach's box. We may have a technical for leaving the coach's box. He wanted to stop the fight before it got carried away. Well, let's see. That foul was on Dryling. Oh, beautiful pass by Hornacek. Ronnie Virgil harassed a little bit, missed it. Schaefer under there, made the little double pump, tried to put it up a little bit hard. Moss has it. He's hammered from behind by Dryling. And a little shoving match, but it's all, all cool now. Well, Moss will have a pair. He's one for one at the line tonight. This is a brick. All right, Dave, calm down. Settle down and put some touch to it. Eight minutes, 14 seconds left to play in the ball game, and Iowa State doesn't hit it, but Greer is there with the rebound and wisely brings it out. And a new 45-second shot clock. Virgil works his way in the lane to Schaefer. And Iowa State may well want to use most of that 45. Here's Virgil from 15, brings it back out, making Kansas really move their feet on defense. And you can't help but think that everybody's getting tired at this point in the ball game. Hornacek tried to set up the back door play. Shot clock down to 12, 11. Virgil now will have to go to work. Will launch himself. Virgil with 10. 10-point 10 lead. Wow. 
biggest lead of the ball game, Iowa State by 10. They go into dry leg, and he's fouled from behind by Ron Virgil, and that'll quiet the crowd. That'll be the third foul on Virgil, and keep in mind that Kansas goes to the line now. Watch the double team inside, and actually a triple team. Schaefer was there, Moss was there, and Ronnie Virgil went back to help out. Nicked him on the arm a little bit. Well, Archie Marshall comes into the ball game. Larry Brown has been trying to get Calvin Thompson out of the lineup because he has four fouls. And Mark Turgeon comes in for Cedric Hunter. Turgeon, a smart, smart point guard. Dryling will be at the line. So far tonight, he is four for five from the line. Don't 14 be, points for Dryling. Don't be misled by that uh, young boy look of Mark Turgeon. He is a good one. Boy, there's a big miss. Hornacek down with the rebound. Iowa State again, a 10-point leader, 7-13 to play. Greer being hounded by Manning, literally shut down by Manning here in the second half. Moss. And Iowa State trying to utilize time now. Kansas doing a good job. Greer. That's only the second foul of the ball game on Manning, but boy, it is a big team foul because now Iowa State goes to the bonus line. I tell you, Greer had Manning right where he wanted on the hip and had the entire baseline open to the bucket. It's a good foul by Manning. Greer, 0 for 2 tonight, a 65% free throw shooter as Cedric Hunter comes in now, replacing Greg Dryling. Now they're going to get a little speed in the lineup. They need the basketball right now. They don't need that big man inside. They've got to compete with the Cyclones speed-wise. Rare could give Iowa State a 12-point lead. Misses it. And it's tipped. Iowa State basketball. Thompson comes back in now for Kansas, replacing Ron Kellogg. And Calvin Thompson playing on four fouls. Kellogg hit the ball on that rebound on the missed free throw. Went out of bounds, and uh, Greer has it blocked on him. Jump ball. But the possession will go to Iowa State on the alternate possession rule. They call it a jump ball and another break for Iowa State. Johnny Orr said earlier this week that his team, win or lose tonight, likes to play against Kansas. I guess so when you win three of the last five. Hornacek in heavy traffic. Ball kicked around. Hornacek is fouled. And he's fouled by Archie Marshall. And Hornacek, the leading free throw shooter in the Big Eight, will have a one and one. Look at Hornacek right here. Bobbles it. You see right there, Marshall slam into his leg. Pace off 15 on that one. score just checking with the official to make sure that they knew the bonus was in effect. On Marshall, his first foul of the ball game. The Grayer passed up four, four points. The Cyclones still lead by ten. One and second. Doesn't hit it. Rebound. Calvin Thompson. And Iowa State had a chance to really put some room on the board, but they missed two big one-and-one one free throws. And Cedric Hunter lays it up and in. Six minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the ball game. And Kansas's defense now really going to work. Here's the cutter, Greer. Danny Manning doing a great job and strips Greer the ball. Turgeon down court to Marshall. Inside and Virgil picks it up. And there's a pushing foul inside. It may go. Well, wait a minute. No foul. Out of bounds. Virgil tried to throw it back inbounds and hit the backside of the backboard. That's out of play. Good play by Virgil. Tried to make the save on it. See it hit the back of the backboard. That's uh, that's out of bounds. Kansas in that transition game goes to Manning as they set things up. And Manning coming alive as are the Kansas Jayhawks. Cut to and here, six. Comes, here comes full court pressure. Virgil. Well, Iowa State trouble playing slow down basketball and they have not scored in their last three possessions now. Virgil finds room, bobbles the ball and he's fine.
and the foul is on Mark Turgeon as Sam Hill checks back into the lineup now for Iowa State for Dave Moss. And listen to the hand they give Dave Moss. Standing ovation for David. He's earned it. Played extremely well. Both first half and second half. Leaves the game with nine points. Or seven points, excuse me. Virgil, an 82% free throw shooter, has not been to the line tonight. And boy, Iowa State needs help. They can't buy a free throw when they really need it down the stretch. Five minutes, 27 seconds left to play in the ball game. And it's knocked out of bounds by Kansas. Now Ron Kellogg comes back in for the Jayhawks. And he'll be replacing Calvin Thompson, who's playing on four fouls. And Larry Brown doing a great tactical job of shuffling players in and out. Not so sure Johnny Orr should call a timeout the next time they're at the line and call the Cyclones down. The free throw line has been disastrous for the Cyclones on the last three trips. Good free throw shooters have missed it. Ronnie Virgil, Hardisak, and Greer. Schaefer gets fouled by Kellogg as he cuts through the lane. That's going to be four on Kellogg now. So Kansas starting to get in foul difficulty as Calvin Thompson comes back in. And he'll replace Archie Marshall. Schaefer needs to get the lid off the bucket for the Cyclones. Iowa State 4 for 11 at the free throw line. Schaefer has yet to shoot in this ball game, but he too is an 83% shooter for the season. Oh. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Cyclones can lose this basketball game at the line. Kellogg in heavy traffic lays it up and in with a great move. Kellogg with eight points in the ball game and it's back down to a four point advantage. John's calling the timeout. It's a good move. Iowa State led by 10. And now it's a four point lead. Four minutes, 48 seconds away from an upset of the fourth rank Kansas Jayhawks. Now, Iowa State 30 of 51 for 59 percent. Kansas 28 of 49 for 57 percent. The rebound's almost even. Cyclones just trail by two. Iowa State with their starting five back in the uniforms or back on the court now. Hornacek, Greer, Tompkins, Hill, and Virgil. And here's the back door to Greer. And a foul called and blocking on Manning. And Greer will go to the line. Kansas right now going with Turgeon and Hunter at the guards. Calvin Thompson, Ron Kellogg, and Danny Manning. Dryling is on the bench at the moment. Now let's see if that timeout helped the free throw line cause of the Cyclones. Greer having a bad night, 0 for 2. And on both occasions, he missed the front end of two one and ones. can't hardly believe this. Two, three, four. That's the seventh in a row. Final. Now it's back to a five-point lead, 65-60. Kansas wasting no time and getting the offense going. They want Iowa State to hustle. Manning, oh, what a player. I'm running out of score room for Manning. Tompkins being hassled from behind beats the double team pressure and Virgil in traffic in the lane Let's see if Iowa State wants to slow it up now and run their offense here's the back door Tompkins lay it four points in the ball game for Tompkins well below his average but oh did they come at a big time oh great pass great setup on the, on the play they pulled everybody outside Hunter goes over top of Hornacek, doesn't get it, but Calvin Thompson with a tip in, his 10th point of the ball game. The lead cut back down to three, 67-64. Hornacek looking for help. Three minutes, 30 seconds left to play in the ball game. Iowa State led by as many as, I believe, a dozen. Hornacek to Hill. For Sam Hill. Great presence by Hornacek. He was on one knee, saw Sam Hill open, got the pass to him for the easy shot. 
Kansas trying to chip it down below five, and they do, and now Larry Brown wants time. As Danny Manning gets another two. That's 24 for Danny Manning in the ball game. Three minutes, four seconds left to play in the ball game. Iowa State with only a three-point lead now. 69-66. Both teams will have three timeouts remaining. Danny Manning, 24 points to lead Kansas. And Jeff Greer leading Iowa State with 19. There's the huddle of Johnny Orr. Larry Brown playing basket for basket. There's the new scoreboard here at Hilton Coliseum. And as you can see, it even lists the points and the fouls for each player. Checking the foul difficulties for each team. Thompson and Kellogg both with four for Kansas. Hill and Greer in dangerous ground with four for Iowa State. Three. Well, Greer has having, three. Greer's only got three. You bet. That's, that's an important graphic. Larry Brown talking to his Jayhawks. They've only lost twice this entire year. Duke yeah. University was one, Memphis State was another. Kansas got within three points, and I think that Larry Brown called the timeout. He wanted to let the players know if they were going to stay in this ball game with three minutes, four seconds left. If it came right down to the nitty-gritty, they were going to have to foul. Well, tonight it wouldn't make much difference who they foul because the Cyclone's not hitting well from the free throw line. But Tompkins would be the guy. Tompkins, not a very good percentage, 33% from the line. Grayer's next worst at 65%. It will be Iowa State basketball. They'll have to come the full length of the court, and you can bet your bottom dollar that Kansas will apply some pressure here. Larry Brown lining him up. Three minutes, four seconds left to play in the ball game. 69-66, Iowa State. They have led the entire second half. And Johnny Orr wisely having Tompkins take the ball out of bounds, putting it in the hands of Hornacek, the best free throw shooter in the Big Eight. Virgil looking for cutters. Hill one on one over Thompson. And what a big basket for Hill. He's having a banner night. 17 for Sam. Kansas can waste little time and putting a hoop in now. And it's Thompson launching. A foul inside, and it may be on Sam Hill. Let's wait till we get the official indication. It is. Sam Hill has fouled out of the ball game for Iowa State. And Johnny Orr, instead of going to David Moss, is going with Tom Schaefer, a better offensive player perhaps than David Moss at this point. Well, you look at the lineup that's in right now. Manning's the big man inside, and I think Schaefer's played extremely well against Manning. Dryling is sitting out. Sam, one of his better games, leaves with 17 points. Had four rebounds in the first half, and I guess picked up four or five more. He's near 10 rebounds. Tell you what, it's the best overall game he's had this year. He had 21 against Drake in a losing effort. And Danny Manning will go to the line for the first time tonight. And it's there. Manning with 25 points, and that cuts the margin to four. The bench scoring tonight, 11 to 4. We told you about the depth for Iowa State. It has come through. Manning cuts it down to a three-point gap. What a player Danny Manning is. Greer helps with the inbounds pass. He'll bring it up against Manning, but keep in mind, Manning can do it all. 2.25 left to go in the ball game. Iowa State by three, 71-68. Virgil way outside. Iowa State working a weave, trying to make the Kansas man-to-man -man move. Shot clock down to 20 seconds. Work, working, trying to get Harnesek open inside, too. He's got a little man on him. Lead pass to Tompkins, knocked out of bounds, and last to touch it was Mark Turgeon. Turgeon made a nice play on it, but couldn't make the save. 13 seconds on the shot clock now for Iowa State. See what play the Cyclones select to go with here. Two minutes, two seconds left to play in the ball game. Corner sec and better hurry. Ten on the shot clock. He'll go over top of Hunter. No good. And the rebound fought for. Knocked out of bounds by Tom Schaefer. It'll be Kansas basketball. So it's coming down to the wire. 153 to play in the ball game and a three-point Iowa State advantage. 
Kansas can cut it to one right here. Thompson drives on Greer and hits it. Oh. 12 points for Calvin Thompson as Greer quickly comes down, looks for Tompkins to Schaefer, and Iowa State sets it up. They want to use the clock. A one-point ball game, 71-70. Iowa State down to a minute 25. Shot clock down to 27 seconds. Lonnie Virgil having a great game with 10 points. Tompkins below par tonight with only four. But Virgil always comes through with a big pass. And here it is to Hunter. He gets it. And Hunter comes out of there with it. No traveling call. He bobbled the ball but nothing called. Thompson from downtown. And Hornacek is fouled by Turgeon. Hornacek had position for the rebound, went high on the board, and little Mark Turgeon fouled the best free throw shooter in the Big Eight Conference. I'll tell you, that's little Mark Turgeon at 5'10", in there rebounding with six foot three inch Hornacek. He can get up in the air. He's a good, scrappy little player. Cyclones in their longest home court winning streak. 12 in a row they've won here. Looking for lucky or unlucky 13 tonight. They've beaten Kansas three of the last five meetings, including the last two in a row. A two-point victory last year here at Hilton, 72-70. Oh, those are big free throws. Four sec now with 11 points in the ball game and less than a minute, 59.4 seconds left to play. Iowa State then decisively beat Kansas by 16 on the neutral court of Kemper Arena in the Big Eight tournament last year. And Hornacek has found the range, and Iowa State leads by three again, 73-70. Clock rolling with 55 seconds to play in the ball game. Cedric Hunter looking inside. Thompson will fire from 15. And Tompkins down with a big rebound. Gets it down court to Virgil. Here's a three on one, but Tompkins is fouled in the backcourt. Well, Kansas knew they wanted to foul Gary Tompkins. He's the worst free throw shooter on the Cyclone team, and they accomplished that feat. Watch Tompkins come out with it. Watch Danny, man. That was that was no question in my mind. That's an intentional foul. But they know who they were going to get, and they didn't want Cyclones had a three-on-one break. They'd have had an easy two. 44 seconds left to play in the ball game. Gary Tompkins at the line with one and one. Not an intentional foul. One and one. And Dryling comes in for the rebounding strength. He'll replace Calvin Thompson. And the 45-second clock is now dead. It's out. Tompkins, only four points in the ballgame, has not gone to the free throw line tonight. Now keep in mind that Tompkins is only a 33% free throw shooter. It is a one and bonus, not two. Let's see if he worked in practice. Almost gets the roll. Dryling down with the rebound. Turgeon down to 40 seconds. Shot clock no longer a factor. Kellogg wants to go on Virgil. Charges into the lane. Ball knocked loose. Tompkins gets it out to Hornacek. Hornacek. Will try to retain possession now. And he's fouled by Manning. And it's going to be a one and one. Danny Manning has to commit the foul to kill the clock. And that's foul number four on Danny Manning. Iowa State with a three-point lead. Danny Manning, 26 points in the ballgame tonight. Hornacek, the leading free throw shooter in the big eight at the line with one in bonus. And he just came back from hitting both ends. And he'll sit down for a little bit. Larry Brown may want to call timeout if Hornacek hits the first. Kansas will have to hurry. Less than 30 seconds to play in the ballgame. Iowa State by three. Kansas, 19 and two on the year, ranked fourth in the nation. Wow, what a free throw. Three for four for Hornacek. 13 points in the ballgame. It's a five-point advantage. Does Iowa State have Kansas's number? We're 25 seconds away from finding out as Cedric Hunter cuts the gap. Timeout, Kansas.
Kansas with 21.9 seconds left to play. And it's again a three-point lead. Hunter with a big basket, only his eighth point in the game. 75-72. Cyclone, Cyclones might have applied just a little pressure. They've been rolling the ball up the floor, saving some seconds. And they just had a man there to prevent that. I think maybe the next time down, if they get an opportunity, they'll do that. Put a man there to keep from using the clock to their advantage. Now, Johnny Orr talking in his huddle to his Cyclones, probably setting up right here. A situation where Gary Tompkins, the poorest free throw shooter, undoubtedly will take the time, the ball out. Let's see if we can hear Johnny Orr. Larry Brown trying to determine who do you foul once they get that basketball. Iowa State had an extremely cold spell midway here in the second half from the free throw line. A torrid night overall over the line. A terrible night, I should say, not torrid. Iowa State going with Schaefer, Virgil, Tompkins, Greer, and Hornacek. And Kansas selecting the smaller lineup. Kansas has one timeout left. There's the whole story. Tenths of seconds being displayed on the new clock. Tompkins will take it out. Brown says no foul. And Tompkins can't get it in in time, so he calls timeout. And Larry Brown wanted the five-second call and didn't get it. You can almost see the wheels going in Thompson's head. Tompkins head saying one, two, three. He called it. Made the good move. Well, Kansas has only one timeout remaining. Johnny Orr has two timeouts remaining. And for some reason, I think four-tenths of a second came off the clock. Well, Gary Tompkins undoubtedly wants to get that ball inbounds now. Let's see if they try a different play and break somebody down court because they are known on occasion to put a sleeper down court. On a sec or Gray. Two and three against Iowa State. One of the greatest coaches in college basketball. But he has been on the short end of the stick to Johnny Orr. But of course, Orr versus Kansas, also coming up on the short end, only five and six. Or you don't think there's a lot of coaching that takes place in the final 30 seconds of a basketball game? It all gets down to that. You play the, about the first 38 minutes to get in position. Iowa State with a three-point lead, 75-72 in the basketball. 21 and a half seconds remaining to be played. Well, now they put those four-tenths of a second back on the clock because the ball never entered play on that last attempt. So it's 21.9 officially, and they have corrected the clock. A foul on Kansas. Hornacek is fouled before the ball even comes in by Cedric Hunter. And it's a one and one for Hornacek. Hornacek, who is four out of five from the free throw line tonight, will go to the line to try to give Iowa State a five point lead. And still, there are 21.9 seconds on that clock. Good play by Kansas. You consider that uh, no time went off the clock. They picked up the foul. They put Hornacek at the line. They're still down by three, and they're hoping maybe that Jeff Hornacek will miss the front end of a one-and-one. One. Johnny Orr puts no one in the lane. Hornacek, 14 points tonight, four for five. And calmly, really Johnny Orr wants no foul on the rebound, so all remaining Cyclones are down court. And Tompkins there to prevent him from rolling the ball in blue eyes. Kansas will have to hurry. 18, 17. Thompson lobs it into Kellogg. He gets the hoop. Oh, and Kansas get gets timeout as Kellogg just creamed Ron Virgil to the court. He just absolutely caught him in the jaw right under the chin with an elbow and went up to the bucket. Kellogg with 14 points in the ball game. And we're back 
to the same situation we were before. Johnny Orr wants a charge, but nobody calls him. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Remember, Pabst is the one. 12 seconds left to play in this one. And let's take a look at some of the good people that made our telecast possible tonight. Our producer is Robert Helmers. Our director is Randy Shelton. Our stage manager is Tim Berry, who's sitting to my immediate left. Terry McFarland doing the button pushing tonight. Audio is John Love and some of the other folks that are making our telecast possible each and every game here on the Cyclone Television Network. We really appreciate your good company on this Tuesday night. 12 seconds remain in the basketball game. And although we endeavor tonight to bring you the excitement of Big 8 college basketball, all of us on the Cyclone Television Network share America's sorrow in the loss of our seven astronauts today. And following tonight's game, please stay tuned for more details from your local stations. Our next game at Missouri, live Tuesday, February 18th, 8 p.m. on most of these same Cyclone Television Network stations. It'll come to you from the Hearns Multipurpose Center down in Columbia, Missouri. Same setup. Cedric Hunter will be on Hornacek, and that's the man they want to get the basketball to. Kansas with no timeouts remaining now. They cannot stop the clock. Inside to Greer, back to Tompkins, up court to Virgil, looking for Hornacek, and he'll bring it across, and Iowa State is going to upset fourth-ranked Kansas into Tompkins, and Greer is fouled. Let's see if they let him shoot it. No time on the clock, and Iowa State has beaten Kansas. It's over. Larry Brown and Johnny Orr shaking hands. They're two great friends, and the fourth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks upset by Iowa State 77-74 and Iowa State now moving into a tie for second in the Big 8. Johnny Orr just getting win number 330 and I think Jeff Greer may have to shoot the free throws. He does. Well, that's a great basketball game. Well, let's see. They are not going to let him shoot. He wants the points. The foul was called, and Orr wants Greer to shoot, regardless of the win. Well, the official score said the time had expired when the foul had occurred. You just couldn't hear it. A happy man, Johnny Orr, and an ecstatic cyclone crowd, 77-74. And we'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment.